No, 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 no. Sorry, I can't. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. Why would I want to play as the Japanese military? They're always getting their asses kicked. Super Godzilla. I remember renting this game when I was a kid, and every opportunity I could for my local blockbuster, especially after I heard about this game in an issue of Nintendo Power. I miss that magazine. It was the best place for Nintendo gamers to get their information. You know, before the internet came around. But to no surprise, the issue of Nintendo Power was not very kind when it came to reviewing this game. It comes with the territory. Godzilla has never really been a favorite among the critics, with its games and movies. But hey, I was not interested in that. Bottom line, this is a Godzilla game for the Super Freaking Nintendo, so I had to try it out. This is a game that I play quite a bit over the years, so I do have a bit of a soft spot in my heart for this game. But how good is this game really? Well, let's find out. I'm Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming, and this is my review of Super Godzilla. Well, Super Godzilla. Right off the bat, the advancement from the original Nintendo to the Super Nintendo is very apparent with this great opening cinematic, which shows a pretty accurate depiction of Godzilla with his trademark roar. So the presentation seems to be on point, but what about the rest of the game? By pressing the start, we head into the story of this game, and it is aliens that are invading the Earth. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that pretty much a storyline for every Godzilla game out there? Aliens are invading? Well, in any event, to counter this threat, the Japanese government has managed to attach some sort of mind control device on Godzilla, and are using him to fight the alien invaders. So essentially, Godzilla has been drafted. He's then sent from one section to another to deal with the alien threat. From saving a base, rescuing a professor, saving cities, and of course, battling enemy monsters. The first one you deal with is King Ghidorah, and after beating him, the cells of Godzilla and Ghidorah are fused to increase Big G's power. He would then go on to battle Mecha Godzilla, Biollante, Batra, Mecha King Ghidorah, yeah that's a thing, and finally the main boss Baggin. So the gameplay, what exactly is it? Is it a side-scrolling action game? Is it a top-down RPG? Well, neither. What it is is something that takes elements from many different genres and comes up with something wholly unique. Whether it's a good thing is quite debatable, so... Well, here's how it works. Do you see those great graphics of Godzilla? Well, ignore that. You need to be keeping an eye downstairs. The blue dot is Godzilla, and he's always on the move. The player guides him around by using the D-pad. Now the area is divided from four to eight spaces, and they are filled with obstructions, which are mostly buildings or mountains. Now you can try to burrow through them, but you will lose energy if you do, which is indicated by the blue swirly line. So the loss of energy is a way to persuade you from doing that, as it would make the game a little too easy. Your goal is to get Godzilla to the enemy before the time runs out. You will have to deal with tanks, minefields, and rocket launchers along the way. Those again will chip away at your health. But there are also these spaces right here which will contain health replenishers and items that you can use in battle like energy capsules, defense, and spirit razors. Yeah, the spirit. So, um, when you engage the monster foes in battle, here is where we see the most interesting part about this game. Now, the best I can describe it is that it's some kind of role-playing random chance battle. Godzilla has two moves at first, a block for incoming attacks and a punch. Now, how it works is you have to get in close. This will raise your fighting spirit, which is indicated here. So, you connect with a punch and then pull back as far as you can. When you do, the action box will start randomly running through a variety of attacks that you can choose from, like a tackle, a tail whip, an atomic blast, or a hyper-atomic blast. 
The game then goes into a flash cutscene, complete with anime lines showing the result. With every attack that connects, the health of the monster will drop, which is shown by the numbers at the bottom right hand corner, really hearkening to many RPGs. Now, the first match with Ghidorah is pretty easy, but the other monsters have defenses against certain attacks. For example, Mega Godzilla's shield can deflect the atomic blast. Because of Biollante's size, body strikes are useless, and Batra's flying ability makes him immune to all attack except the hyper atomic blast. And you have to deal with two. This makes Batra the most annoying one to fight. Another foe you're going to have to deal with is the occasional UFOs, which pop up from time to time. They're just there to extend the gameplay, that's all. These things go down by a punch, a blast, and that's it. These things will pop up from time to time unless you take out the mother UFO, which is another time guzzler. Just wait until it's in range and punch, blast, and boom, there you go. For as long as i played this game, I, I honestly am not too sure how this really works. I know that I have to get in close and punch, but I honestly feel like I'm barely in control. So much of the fighting just comes down to pure random chance. You just have to get as close as you can to raise the fighting spirit and pull back in order to get access to more attacks. The block can help prevent some of the incoming attacks for a time, but that does not prevent the monster's fighting spirit from shooting upwards all of a sudden and then unleashing attacks on you. It really does feel like fighting is secondary, and most of the focus are on the cutscenes. Now look, they are great to look at, and I suppose the main thing they were trying to make you feel was that you're playing a actual Godzilla movie, with the presentation, the story, and the dialogue. The game only took me a little over two hours to beat, so... yeah. Now as the game goes along, Godzilla will increase in strength. And when you get to that last boss, here's where you can find three major energy storages that can transform you into Super Godzilla. Oh yeah. This is the best part of the game, period. Super Godzilla is just awesome. I've always loved his design. In fact, I was hoping that the 98 Godzilla movie would use something like this. With Super Godzilla, you have a hyper punch that can travel across the screen, a laser blast in your tail, you always have hyper blast, and your body tackles causes the 4th of July. Basically, when you are Super Godzilla, you win. Well, like I said before, the actual fighting in the game is secondary to the game's presentation, and up to that point, a Godzilla game has never looked any better. The character designs, the sound effects, and music all perfectly capture the feeling of a Godzilla movie. While the NES game did an admirable job, the Super Nintendo did see quite a jump in that area. Here's a few music tracks that I enjoy. So here's the question, is Super Godzilla a good game? Bit hard to say, in my opinion. I have played it a great deal in the past, mainly because I did not have access to the far superior Godzilla Kaiju Daikasen, which should have come over here to the States by the way, I'm still PO'd about that. I can at the very least say that Super Godzilla is an interesting experiment. It's a very different type of game, and I do respect that. For the longest time, Godzilla games were usually regulated to 3D fighters. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking those. I have quite a few of them, and I really enjoy them. But in the end, Super Godzilla's style is not going to appeal to everyone. I guess you have to be in the right mood to play this one. That's really the best I can say about it. It's different and unique. That's all I can really say. The game had a goal, and it achieved its goal, but I'm not sure if that was the right way to go. They wanted to make a more cinematic experience, and for that much it does work. 
Whether that works for you or not, I guess just based on your own point of view. Well, there you have it. There's my review of Super Godzilla for the Super Nintendo. It definitely was a very interesting beast. So, thank you very much for joining me on this little trip down memory lane. So, I'm all ready for the new movie, that's for sure. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter as I'm doing a sort of review series. I'm kind of marathoning all the Godzilla movies, giving you my quick thoughts. So you can check that out on my Twitter account. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on the next review from the Brotherhood of Gaming. I'm Eugene Morris. Until then, take care. Hey there, everyone. Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters. Links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.